What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Bite with your weekly dose for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. This week, Samsung dropped the Note 7, and the big A has to be a little concerned. Now, Apple won't have an OLED screen until the rumored 2017 timetable, and don't expect it to have HDR tech plus iris scanning? That's rumored in 2018. And Samsung knows they're winning. They ripped on Apple for charging 99 bucks for the Apple Pencil, while their S Pen comes with the Note 7. But you know they're really feeling themselves after this dig. Do you want to know what else it comes with? An audio jack. I'm just saying. Ow, it's like, ugh, that actually hurt. But one thing Apple can be happy about, at least their employees make a lot more noise when a new product is introduced. It is my pleasure to introduce the Samsung Galaxy Note 7. Uh-huh. Now, Apple will still sell a gazillion units, but if the rumors are true, there's not a single feature the new iPhones will have that can top what the Note 7 has right now. And that's a sad Apple. Aww. All right, Apple has released the fourth beta to developers for all of its upcoming software platforms, including iOS 10, tvOS, watchOS Trace, and yes, Mac OS Sierra. But the big buzz from the updates comes out of iOS 10's fourth beta and the over 100 new emojis they've added to the mix with more diverse options, female versions of athletes, a rainbow flag for LGBTQ pride, and the gun emoji now looks like a safe green water gun. Unfortunately, redheads are still missing, a marginalized and misrepresented group in the world of emojis. And to offer my support for them, I created my own emoji for all you redheads. Hashtag Redhead emojis matter. Now, Apple put out a new TV ad positioning Apple's iPad Pro as a computer. Just when you think you know what a computer is. And sure, it's a type of computer. And you all know I have a huge man crush on my iPad Pro. It's my favorite Apple product in a long time. But for my use, it's keyboard cases, junk, and there's no way I'm able to do video editing, script writing, Photoshop, and multitasking on it like I can on my computer. Now, I know there's some of you who just web browse, email, and word process, and you use the iPad. But the Surface Pro is the only tablet that can really replace a computer right now. Hey, Apple, get on working on a hybrid OS, and then we can talk. And the iPad is still a media consumption device for me, and it's not replacing a computer anytime soon. Also, if you've been wondering what's been holding Apple back from getting a TV streaming service, the answer is Apple. The Wall Street Journal details how Apple has come to the table with content providers and TV networks for serious talks on at least five different occasions since 2009, and it's been Apple's arrogance and the belief that, hey, we're Apple, that's prevented them from striking deals. It's just what I've suspected. Their hubris and demands aren't reasonable, and the TV industry is doing fine with or without Apple. Now, one account of the many meetings from the Journal described how Apple's Eddie Q arrived to a planned meeting with Time Warner CEO and others 10 minutes late wearing jeans and tennis shoes with no socks and a Hawaiian shirt. No socks, people. That sounds more like Eddie P.U. Now the other execs were all in suits and TV execs feel Apple has no idea how the industry works while Eddie P.U. has said the TV industry is overly complicated, which really translates to they won't do what we want. Now Sling TV and PlayStation View have both figured it out for the past two years but Apple hasn't, and they're in need of another revenue stream. So good luck to you, Apple. Wear socks next time. And you even made iPad Nano socks a long time ago, so uh, wear those. All right, rumors still point to the next Apple Watch to be announced and released this year. It might even show up at the September event. Digitimes reports the second-gen Apple Watch will feature a one-glass solution display instead of the current glass-on-glass -glass technology. Now, the new tech would eliminate one layer of glass from the display and could allow Apple to save a small amount of internal space while also reducing the weight of the watch. So, we'll keep a watch on this. Now, Tim Cook also announced on Twitter that July was a record-breaking month for the App Store with the highest ever monthly billings and money paid to developers. It's pretty obvious that's almost exclusively tied to Pokemon Go, or if you're Tim Cook, you pronounce it Pokemon Go, like multiple times during Apple's earnings. Come on, Timmy. It's not even that hard. And you know what? That's a bad Apple. Ah! And try not to fall directly on your iPhone, everybody. A Sydney bicycle rider was severely burnt when his iPhone exploded in his back pocket after he fell off his bike 
and landed where the iPhone was. Now warning, this might be a little graphic for some of you, so I'll give you a few seconds to close your eyes. All right, one, two, okay, here it is. Gareth Clear suffered third degree burns which required skin grafts. And Apple's not directly to blame, but anyone who gets burnt on their booty by a battery, that's just a bad apple. <laughs> now batteries have been shown to be prone to exploding due to high impacts, and there's nothing he could have done other than getting a better bike. Like, seriously, was he just a bad bike rider or was it a bad bike? Okay, I'm kidding, but the good thing is that he's okay and it's just something to be aware of. All right, that's gonna do it for this week's show. We didn't have enough time to announce the winner, so the AirView contest is still good for one more week. You can always email us at theapplebite at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you all next time for another bite of the apple.